Hey guys, Richard Holder here. We all know I love to talk about booze. So in my last video, I ran that low buck eBay GT45 turbo on a number of different combinations. But that begs the question, can we do the same thing with an even bigger turbo? In this video, we are going to take a look at the larger 7875 Gen 2 Turbo from VS Racing. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the GT45 eBay Low Buck Turbo in the previous video. We're going to apply this bigger turbo to a number of different combinations, starting out with the same small motor, the 2.4 liter K-Series Honda. We're also going to run it on a double size, 4.8 liter LS, and then we're going to step even more to a 440 inch big block Mopar. So the question is, can the big turbo actually work on the little motor? We know it works on the 4.8. We also think it's going to work on the 440, but how well does it work on all of them? And before I go, I have a challenge for you guys. Do you want to see more turbo testing like this? Because I've also run a lot of different turbos on a lot of different combinations. I've run an S480, an S475, and that little 76 millimeter from CX Racing. I've run all of those turbos on a number of different combinations. So if you like these comparisons, let me know. And here's my challenge. If I get a thousand comments in this video telling me, yes, Richard, we want to see those videos, I'll make it happen. The first of our three combinations we applied our 7875 Gen 2 Turbo from VS Racing with was a K24A2. It was a Honda motor. It was a JDM version that I bought from a local JDM place. And we ran all this testing with the guys at Skunk 2. Now, this particular motor did not have any internal changes to it. I didn't change the pistons or the connecting rods or anything. I didn't even put ring gap in it. We just ran it the way that it came from the local supplier. We did change two things, though. Uh, well, technically three, I guess. We put some skunk, uh, some stage two cams in it. We also put a skunk intake manifold on it. And then when we ran it NA, we also ran it with one of their long tube headers. And we run a bunch of other tests, both NA and turbocharge on this combination. But this is the configuration for the NA motor. So run with those skunk stage two cams. This thing produced 288 horsepower and 100 and 93 foot pounds of torque naturally aspirated obviously we dialed in the air fuel and both the cam timing and the ignition timing we played with both of those until we kind of got an optimized combination you can see we ran this k24 a2 even though it's a k24 with the stock oil pump and stuff ran it all the way out to 8700 rpm and it, and it was making good power out there so that's why we continued to rev it out there because it continued to make power but we ran our 7875 and unlike the gt45 test in the previous video, I do have specs on this uh, 7875 from VS Racing. It is a Gen 2 7875, very popular uh, among the LS guys. It is a T4 hot side and it is a 1.25 AR on the hot side. And the exhaust is designed to accept a V-band for a four inch exhaust pipe. And that's exactly what we ran on this thing. So here's what happened after we installed the 7875 turbo. And by the way, I also ran the turbo with an air to water intercooler. We ran it on E85 and for the, for the uh, exhaust feeding the exhaust to the turbo, I used the stock K24A2 exhaust manifold and just adapted this like super richy uh, turbo manifold setup for it. So using the stock exhaust manifolds and a couple of bends that I had that were already equipped with the wastegates, I was able to configure this thing. So it was by no means optimum. But as we've seen before, time and time again, including on this one, it works well and makes good power. So we ran the boost up. Here, here are all the different boost levels. So as we add more and more boost, it starts making, obviously, more and more power. We ran this thing up to about 13 pounds where this thing ended up making 588 horsepower 
and 425 foot-pounds of torque. When we ran this test on the K24A2, it wasn't really to find out how well or how much power we could make with a 7875 because it will certainly support a lot more power, much closer to a 1,000 horsepower. But what we were trying to find out, we ran four different turbos on it, and we were just testing basically the response rate of the different size turbos. And the 7875 was was the third biggest of the four that we tested. And then we had one that had an even bigger hot side. So we were showing how much softer spool up they have for each of these combinations. But this was the first of our combination. It easily could get near 600 horsepower and could go a lot farther than this, especially on this application. I don't think we'd have any trouble making a thousand horsepower with this turbo because it had very limited um, exhaust back pressure on this combination. So let's check out what happened. We ran it on a 4.8. After running the 7875 from VS Racing on the 2.4 liter K24A2 motor, we basically doubled the displacement and stepped up to a 4.8 liter LR4, you know, the LS family, the small version of the LS family. And the nice thing about the 7875 on a 4.8 liter is it sized very well. We know that that turbo will support a thousand horsepower because we've done that already and so have lots of other guys. But we know that on the 4.8 liter also, the nice thing about having it on that small V8, basically on the LS family, it's the small version of the V8, but on that combination, it'll make a thousand horsepower, but it'll also do it with a very low back pressure. So if you step up to even larger displacement, say for instance, a 5.3 liter or a six liter or even bigger, like a 383 or a 408, you have to start being concerned about back pressure because on the on a more powerful, bigger combination, you kind of get to the, the flow rate or the the limit of the flow rate of the hot side before you hit the compressor side. So on this 4.8 liter, we didn't have that problem. This was a 4.8 liter LR4. It had a 706 head. It had the standard truck intake manifold. It had a truck size throttle body <laughs> because the opening of the, of the stock throttle body or the, the, thr the stock truck intake obviously is limited. So there's no sense of trying to put a 102 millimeter throttle body on an opening that's sized for a 78 or 80 millimeter throttle body. So it's also had a mild camshaft in it. This was from JFR. It was a 595. 595 lift, 224, 228 degree duration at 50, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. It was one of the many cams that we ran in our Sloppy Stage 2 versus the world. This thing was also set up with a set of uh, Snake Eater Performance 1500 cc injectors. We ran this thing on E85, but before doing that, we ran this thing naturally aspirated. And again, this was a 4.8 liter, but it did have a forged piston that it had a JE forged piston, a small dome, so it was slightly higher compression ratio. But the dome or the uh, forge piston obviously allowed us to kind of get <laughs> to step up and boost pressure without having to worry about the thing. Not that we would anyway, even at this power level. But running naturally aspirated trim, this 4.8 liter produced 411 horsepower and 367 foot-pounds of torque. So it's not a real powerful 4.8 liter combination. But the thing is, if you start with a motor that makes over 400 horsepower and you start adding boost to it, <laughs> it's pretty easy to make a lot of power. And especially if you have a lot of turbo. So we, we, we ran our VS Racing Turbo with the truck in, or the truck exhaust manifolds feeding our Y pipe with two, uh, Turbo Smart 45 millimeter wastegates. We had an air to water intercooler from the guys at ProCharger. And here's what happened after we started basically adding boost. I'll show you a bunch of different boost levels here. So as you can see, we took this thing all the way up over 800 horsepower. Kind of give you some stuff in between here. So 
So as you can see, the 7875 will easily support this kind of power level. This was only 800 horsepower. So we went from a little over 400 to over 800 horsepower. And we were in the 14 to 15, maybe as high as 16 pounds, uh, depending on what uh, what power level we were running at again we ran it on e85 so this combination worked well and we were only we were only scratching the surface of what this 7875 would do because as i said we know having running on other combinations where it, it did um we turned it up as high as a thousand horsepower and it'll definitely make that kind of power level and because we're not the only ones that have tested this turbo lots of other guys matt and the guys over at sloppy uh they've they've run this turbo up um you know at a lot higher boost boost pressure. We know that it'll support that power level. And on a 4.8 liter, it works very well. It worked well on the 2.4 liter. It worked well on the 4.8 liter. So now let's step up to something even bigger. The final test run on our 7875 uh, turbo from BS Racing actually came on the biggest displacement, which was 440 inches. It was a Dodge 440 from a motorhome that I borrowed from David Freiberger, but it's actually the least powerful of the three combinations, oddly enough, even though it was the biggest because it was a very mild application. And again, it was from a it was a high mileage one from a motor home that um, I borrowed from David Freiberger, which is where I get all of my good motors from, either from the wrecking yard or over from him and him and Steve Dulcich. But this was a 440, and in this condition, the 440 was equipped with a stock head, stock short block. Uh, we did put uh, Beehive, we did a valve spring upgrade because we were going to do a cam. It had an Edelbrock Performer intake and a Holley 750 XP. It did have long tube headers on it, and I'm not sure whose headers they were. I think that they, those were borrowed as well. So run in this condition, we had the uh, timing set at about 38 degrees. This was run on pump gas. All I know is the jets in the 750, because we only checked the rear ones, were um, 74s on the 750. So run in this manner, our naturally aspirated 440 inch motor actually made less than the K24A2 did. It made 347 horsepower, but obviously it made a lot more torque. Instead of the 193 foot pounds, this thing made 441 foot pounds and it had a good tor torque curve. It made most of its torque down low as we would expect. I mean, it made peak power below 5,000 RPM and it made peak torque at 3,500 or 3,600 RPM. Uh, you know, and the headers obviously helped this thing compared to the stock exhaust manifolds. But what we did was I configured this thing to run, uh, you know, the Super Richie do-it-yourself turbo kit using the stock exhaust manifolds feeding. I just made exhaust pipes feeding the Y-pipe, the same Y-pipe that we use on everything else. It had two TurboSmart, the 46 millimeter, 45 millimeter hypergates. It had the V-band on it so I could put whatever turbo we wanted on it. We put this uh, VS Racing 7875. Here's what happened when we added five and a half pounds. Now we ran this thing non-intercooled. I just ran it as a blow-through using our CSU Racing 85 millimeter blow-through carburetor. We take a look and I think I retarded the timing. Retard the timing from about 41 or 42 down to 27 pounds. We had uh, 81 jets uh, or 86 jets, I should say, in the carburetor. We had the boost reference power valve uh, two turns in from, from what I call flush. <laughs> we had seven pound springs on the gate and again, no intercooler with the blow through carburetor. And then so run the 7875 had good boost response as we can see. We have a nice, good, even gain from the torque curve the peak power jumped up to 467 horsepower peak torque was up to 586 foot pounds here's what happened when we jumped up and had a little bit of timing on that one pick boost up to 6.8 pounds And eventually 7.8 pounds, where we made 525 horsepower peak torque. We won't look at this big uh, deal there, but you know, you're talking over 650 foot pounds, and probably and may have been a little bit more than that um, had we been able to load the motor down lower. But 650 foot pounds and 525 horsepower from this 
basically low compression 440 motor from a motor home. So as you can see, turbos and big motors, <laughs> they work really well and make lots and lots of torque. And, and the 7875 on this big 440 inch motor was very responsive. It had a, had a, had a good solid boost curve. And again, we didn't use a, I don't think we used, a, I don't think I used a um, electronic controller on this. I think we just used a manual controller because we were kind of going low buck with the stock exhaust manifolds and no intercooler. And this 7875, as you can see, worked good on a 2.4 liter, a 4.8 liter, and then on, on this Dodge 440. So turbos have a lot of versatility and you could be used on a lot of applications. And even this thousand horsepower turbo, you can use on the little four cylinder, on the V8 and on this big V8. All works pretty good. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what'd you think about our comparison of the Gen 2 7875 Turbo from VS Racing? We ran it on the 2.4 liter, the 4.8, and the larger 440. And it just goes to show you once again, turbos are fairly versatile. We can take a turbo that's designed to make as much as a thousand horsepower, and we can run it on a even smaller 2.4 liter. It works well on the 4.8, and it also works well on the 440. So you got a wide range of combinations. Now again, like with that GT45 turbo video, is it ideal on all these combinations? Probably not. If I was picking a turbo for the 2.4 liter K-Series Honda, I would pick something probably smaller if I wanted to run four or 500 horsepower at the tire and drive it around. I'd pick something smaller and more responsive and then just head out and go have fun. But if you want to make seven or eight or 900 horsepower from that combination, this turbo would actually do that. Now we all know it works well on the LS stuff, the 4.8, the 5.3, the 6.0. Guys have run it time and time again. It's a good go-to turbo. If you're looking for something that will make a thousand horsepower or less, it is a good combination. Now it also worked well on the 440, despite the fact that the 440 made the least amount of power of all of our combinations in NA trim, but it was the biggest and it shows the versatility once again of a turbo. So guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, but make sure to make a comment. And I'm not asking you to make a comment because it makes me more money or for some algorithm thing, because quite honestly, I'm not smart enough to understand that. I just want to know that you guys want to see more turbo stuff. Thanks for watching.